Um, Carl Nassib of the Las Vegas Raiders. Man, every time I say that name, I want to say Oakland. Like mm-hmm. I still have any. It's like the uh, it's like the Chargers. I think there's a lot of people that still say San Diego. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I still want to. I still lean towards Oakland, and I pulled myself back in the other direction towards uh, Las Vegas. But um, he went to Instagram yesterday uh, to drop this announcement. Uh, this was uh, from Carl Nassib of the Raiders. What's up, people? I'm Carl Nassib. I'm at my house here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Just want to take a quick moment to say that I'm gay. I've been meaning to do this for a while now, but I finally feel comfortable enough to get it off my chest. I really have the best life. I got the best family, friends, and job a guy could ask for. I'm a pretty private person, so I hope you guys know that I'm really not doing this for attention. I just think that representation and visibility are so important. I actually hope that like one day, videos like this and the whole coming out process are just not necessary. But until then, you know, I'm gonna do my best and do my part to cultivate a culture that's accepting, that's compassionate. And I'm going to start by donating $100,000 to the Trevor Project. They're an incredible organization. They're the number one suicide prevention service for LGBTQ youth in America. And they're truly doing incredible things. And I'm very excited to be a part of it, to help in any way that I can. And I'm really pumped to see what the future holds. Uh, That's all I have for you guys. I hope you have a great day. Work hard. And uh, so that means uh, Carl Nassib uh, will become the first active NFL player to announce that he is gay. Um, And so Penn State alum, when you see Carl Nassib, uh, you know, step up, make the announcement. What what do you uh, what do you make of that? uh, You know, his the conversation surrounding Carl Nassib coming out. Uh, You know what, Jonas, at at first glance, when I first was told about it before I listened to the video and, and was kind of understanding where it was coming from i was just like my whole thing is is like why you know why do you have to consider it coming out yeah you know if i sit there and say i like women you know or i'm heterosexual that's not you know it's not coming out and and that's like like how i was looking at it initially but then you know i I listened to what he had to say he talked about, he made mention of his donation to the Trevor Project, um, saving LGBTQ lives. And then it made all the sense in the world as to why he did that. If he's compassionate and, and passionate about how, you know, people within the LGBTQ uh, community are treated, then it makes all the sense in the world. You know, at a point in time, in, in our our culture and society, and, and even really now, it's it's shunned, it's frowned upon to take stances where you put that type of stamp on yourself and you're a professional athlete. Lo and behold, it's 2021, and he's the first player to come out, first active player to come out and say he's gay. So for me, if he's shining a light on on that community and he's shining a light on that community as it applies to something very specific where we all know that you know people within that community are bullied they they are uh, maligned they they are attacked and they're treated you know like they're lepers or you know they're they're treated like there's some there's something wrong with them and you know people are taking their their own lives based off of this people are losing their lives based off of this you know people feel as though they can uh devalue who you are and actually go as far as to take your life um because you're you're within you know you like the same sex or you're you're transgender or whatever it may be i mean i saw how how intense the attacks were on on Dwayne wade when he he came out and was having the conversations about his child. So to me, I think it was very brave for him to do it. I think it in in some in, in some regards, I think it was a selfless act because if he believes that he can raise money for this Trevor project that are going to save lives, if he can raise awareness that may lead to more um, openness to have understanding about the topic itself um, and not look at it as just all oh, the minute you hear it it's it's just taboo or it's 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 you know a whole lot of other things that people use to explain it um, 
good for him. You know, yeah. good for him. Times are changing, and and I think people, you know, I think society, as bad as we've gotten, you know, it, it, the s- society to me is way too touch sensitive anymore. Society is way too politically correct anymore, and yet at the same time, it's at its craziest. It's at its most violent. It's it's at its most turbulent um, right now. And you see so many graphic posts, right, Jonas? Like, oh, God. it's just so much stuff right now. I think it's like the perfect time to have somebody kind of pierce that darkness with something positive. Yeah, and, and look, the fact that he is donating the hundred thousand dollars to the to the Pre- Trevor Trevor Project, rather, um, I, I think that's that's the part that's the most important aspect of all of this. Because I, man, call me crazy, and or maybe I'm being naive. I just don't think players in the league care all that much if, if a teammate is gay. Like I, I've, I've talked to players who've known that they, they've had teammates who never did come out for whatever reason. They didn't feel comfortable with it, but they knew that they were gay. They just like, yeah, we, yeah, we knew we, we share a locker room together. Like you, you talk about all sorts of stuff when, and if you don't know, you just assume, but if you can play and you're a good dude and, and, and you're, you're not, you know, being a distraction or you're not causing problems in the locker room, like any normal player, gay or straight would, that would ruffle some feathers the wrong way in a locker room. I mean, like LeVar, I don't know that, that anybody really cares that much anymore. Maybe, maybe I'm being naive, but I just don't know that it's that much of, of an issue with players in the league. I, it feels like this would be something outside of the locker room that maybe some people would have comments for. Well, I mean, I, as, a high school, as a high school coach, um, I don't, I'm not sure how that would play out just based upon the the changing of the way the environment is you know a lot of times guys don't shower and walk around naked like they did you know maybe before now in college and in pros uh you're walking around each other to to go shower you're walk and you're you know you're doing a lot of things where you're either in a towel or you just don't have anything on at all um as a player, did did I think that there were guys that were were gay in the locker room? Um, to be honest with you, those conversations took place at times, but it wasn't a dominant conversation. It wasn't like every time I took my clothes off or every time I went into the shower or every time I went to the restroom or whatever it may have been. Um, I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my gosh, is somebody looking at? First of all, that's very that's very selfish and self absorbed and ignorant to even think that <laughs> to, to base <laughs> like, okay, so they're looking at you. They want you, you know, like, come on, right. you know, right. in the first place. But then the second part of it is, is if you are running that through your mind as your frame of thought um, during the course of that time, you got to question what what's going on with you. And you might have to address some issues that you are harboring if that is a dominating thought process while you're in the locker room. Because, quite frankly, I don't think about that during the course of a day. You know, when when I talk to somebody on the phone, I don't get on. I didn't get on the radio today and I'm like, hmm, I wonder, is Jonas gay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of like for me, it's, it's wild and crazy that – you even have to have this conversation, but there's so many hateful people and evil people that are in this world. You know, my, my daughter just got a, a, a inbox message in her, in her IG account and they called her the N word with the hard R, you know? And, and it's what? like, you Why? feel so, you feel so helpless in, in these types of moments because one, it's probably not even a real account. It's probably somebody that just wants to be a hateful person and 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 harass people on their social media and bully them on their social media. And there's really nothing you can do about it. You take their account away, they create a new account. Um, and and so this hate and this evil is all around us, and then it, it it exists. My daughter is 15 years old. You know, so there's somebody that's walking around that that is, you know, being racially, you know, bullied. There's somebody that's walking around that's being sexual orientation wise being bullied. 
And and so for somebody to step up and take a stand and raise more, you know, awareness around it for those that don't have um, the voice or the platform to be able to to do so, uh, you know, I commend him for it. You know, I'm I'm more one and he may mention of it. And listen, this is one thing that didn't come up in the conversation. He's my alumni. You know, yep. he went to Penn State. Yep. Um, and and so, you know, I I look at it from the standpoint of, you know, one thing about Penn State football players and, and listen, <laughs> there's obviously the 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 big heavyweight gorilla in the room when you talk about things that go down this lane as it applies to Penn State mm-hmm. um, as it stands. Penn State football players are are pretty stand up dudes. It's one of the things that was very attractive to me to want to go play at Penn State and be a part of the Penn State football family. Our our lettermen are are bar none phenomenal and very exceptional people um, as people, and, and and much more matters to us than just being really really good football players. You know, there's a humanitarian side of a uh, humanistic side of what matters to us as players and and that's pretty pretty large pretty pronounced and and i'm pretty proud of that you know and this is to me this is just another notch in the belt while others will judge carl nassib and say he made it about him or nobody wants to hear about you being gay or whatever it may be that may be um, not so positive i look at it and i say here's another example of someone who's trying to make a difference and they're they're actually um smart enough savvy enough to understand the impact that they can have by utilizing their platform uh to make positive change yeah no i think it's uh good for him and uh and look hopefully someday soon this won't be uh you know th- this won't even be newsworthy it'll just be all right well here we are this is the norm we just we we accept everybody you know yeah. it's just 